taking a look at portfolio management with Charles Roeblut. Hi, Charles. Hi. I want to know if the individual investor thinks that buy and hold is dead. I don't think they do, and there's a big misconception about buy and hold. And the problem is people think buy and hold is buy and forget. In reality, even if you're a long-term investor, you need to stay proactive. Companies change, the economies change, industries change. So it's good to buy and hold because it's easy to second-guess yourself, but you need to make sure the reasons you bought the investment still apply. And that means regularly reviewing your investments, making sure that the fundamental characteristics that made the stock attractive are still attractive. And if so, it's more, you're better off holding on to the stock than trying to guess which way the market's going to move. Even professionals have cracked crystal balls, and we never know exactly what the future will bring. How often do you recommend reviewing your situation? I think if you own stocks, it's good to look at your stocks at least once a week. Uh, if you own mutual funds, you can look at them once a quarter. Uh, the big thing is you don't want to look at it daily or particularly every hour because your emotions can take over. You really want to look, for, look at your stocks and your funds and your bonds from the perspective, has anything changed that would actually cause me to no longer like the stock? And that's not really looking at price. It's more looking at the fundamental characteristics, looking at the news flow, looking at earnings, looking at valuation. And if everything is still going right with the company, then you're better off holding the stock rather than trying to guess one to get in and get out based on price action alone. How does the individual investor manage the emotions of investing? Well, one of the things I like to tell people to do is actually write down the reasons they bought the stock and also write down the reasons they would sell a stock before they buy it. And the reason is, before you own the investment, you have no attachment to it. So if you uncover something that's negative, you're going to step back and think, boy, I'm glad I didn't buy it. But once you, if you write down the reasons you might sell it, when something bad happens, you actually have a framework where you can look at your own notes and your own rules and decide, does this warrant me selling the stock or, does, or has something happened that's really not so bad and I'm just scared by the markets? And just having those rules can actually allow you to control your emotions. How about diversification? Is that still important to the individual investor? I think diversification is very important. And again, we can't predict the future and we certainly can't predict what asset class will do best in the future. But if you diversify, you increase your odds of being in the right sector at the right time. Plus, because different asset classes, including bonds, have different return characteristics, you can actually diversify your risk while increasing your return at the same time. How about rebalancing? And how often should you even think about rebalancing your portfolio? Sure, rebalancing is important if you're going to diversify. And the reason why is rebalancing is actually adjusting your allocations back to your targets, the percentage you hold in stocks, the percentage you hold in bonds, and perhaps the percentage you hold in commodities like gold. Uh, Vanguard recommends rebalancing your portfolio twice a year if your allocations are off by 5% more than target. And they actually did research showing that it finds a good mix between controlling costs but still controlling risk at the same time. And an ideal time to do it is actually in November and April because November to April is actually the best time to be in stocks and April to to really, to November is the best time to actually have a heavier allocation to bonds. So those might be the opportune times to actually rebalance your portfolio. But I think it's more important that you at least look at your portfolio at least once a year for rebalancing purposes than to be, more, than be concerned about what month you're actually doing the rebalancing in. Charles, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. I've been speaking with Charles Rothblut. You're watching the MoneyShow.com video network.